Hey YouTube, welcome back to my scenario editor tutorial for Company of Heroes 3. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about trenches. Normally, I wouldn't bring this up this soon, but because the trench systems are probably one of the most important features of this map, I want to tackle them early and get them done right. The thing about getting them done right, however, is that it took me a lot of tweaking to actually get the trenches in a state where I liked them. So instead of showing you guys all those hours of footage in a compressed time span and going through, th going through my trial and error, I'm just going to tell you guys what I found and how I made my trenches. So I just want to recommend the Co3 Essence Editor Knowledge Center, and they have a section on building trenches. And it's pretty good. It doesn't tell you a lot of the minutia that you need to know, but it, it gives you a very clear idea of how to build trenches kind of like this that you see in Gazala Landing Ground and a few other maps. Based off of this written guide and my experience building trenches, I'm going to talk about the four most important parts of building your trench. So the first thing is digging your trench. If you want vaultable trenches, don't dig them deeper than 1.2 meters from the surrounding ground. Infantry are able to traverse in and out, making pathfinding less complicated, and you won't need to have as many breaks in the trench to allow units to come in and out. However, keep in mind that team weapons like machine guns aren't able to vault, so you will have to keep them in mind regardless of your trench's height when you're making those paths that can enter or exit your trench. So because 1.2 meters or less of height difference doesn't obstruct unit pathing, you will have a little bit more flexibility in, in your trench layout regardless. Now, on the other hand, infantry models are two meters high by default, and I don't think you can change that or any unit is different besides like a tank, but we're only talking infantry here, right? So infantry models are only two meters high in any trench deeper than two meters, I don't think will allow them to fire or at the very least your unit in the trench won't be able to see out of there and it would look very wonky if they were shooting at an enemy that another unit had spotted that was outside of the trench. So based on those recommendations, if you want a trench that can't be vaulted over, keep it less than two meters deep and more than 1.2 meters deep. But if you want a vaultable trench, you can do a really shallow half meter, quarter meter, up to 1.2 meters and that was the value i went with on my map i have 1.2 meter deep trenches and um i might have said this earlier but i might change that i might make it deeper so it can't be so units can't vault in and out and that might just be making that might make uh, clicking easier for when you're commanding units and fighting in the area i'm not sure we'll see how it goes the next thing to consider are your trench walls they were something that i really had issues with Definitely the most, I would say. So you gotta pay attention to how big your trench entities are. Plus, overlapping trench entities sometimes produce an odd effect when you hold Alt and rotate the camera. The wooden trench entities have a hitbox that's very close to their actual size, but the concrete trench that I used has a much larger hitbox that doesn't really correspond to the actual visual entity. After doing some testing, I noticed that the very first entity in the concrete trench list, just called Concrete, actually has a very a hitbox that's perfect for its size, and I was able to confirm that it still worked as intended as a trench. So I'm actually changing my my entities to be in, instead of trench wall to be the concrete entity. So to accommodate terrain deformation, the physical size of the concrete in its hitbox area and aesthetic considerations, I chose to dig my trenches at 90 or 45 degree angles. The concrete post entity I use on corners and angles proved very useful for keeping things in order. However, I found that they worked best when I scaled the object to 90% and set it as a visual object only. Otherwise, the hitbox of the entity wouldn't change with a different scale and it would block some pathing in narrow areas and some corners. So after you've got your trench laid out with the, the trench dug and the walls placed, you next need to add your trench spline. Because I made my trenches quite accurately within the bounds of the game, 
I had extremely thin trenches. I set the strip component spline to two width on paths along the X or Z axis and three width on the diagonal sections. Because of the way the terrain deformation of the game's engine works, you can't actually have a one meter width spline on a diagonal because the the paths the pathing meters are only connected on their points in a diagonal fashion, and that just isn't sufficient for units to navigate through. And the final part of your trench is the crush barrier. This wasn't too difficult for me to get right. I just made sure that the hitbox of each of the crush barriers were touching. And in a few spaces where I didn't think tanks would be able to cross, I just left a little space there so tanks wouldn't be able to cross. Now, I don't know what height you have to set these to, but from what I could tell, I just sunk them into the territory or into the terrain just a little bit, not even by half a meter, quarter meter, just a very gentle uh, manual adjustment with the, with the green y-axis arrow when you have the entity selected. So after doing some testing, I realized that units were having a hard time sticking in the trench when they were moving about in the position. And I couldn't just make the trench deeper because the the impact in the, the height delta between the out of the trench and inside of the trench was so great that the, the game was actually blocking off part of the flat path that I wanted units to navigate. So my solution was to just paint impasse with infantry and vaulting infantry around the edges of the trench without modifying its height. And so in this way, infantry cannot vault over the trench and they'll be forced to either go all the way around or more than likely walk through the trench like I want to. And also... This painted impasse, because it's only the infantry level, it, it's the no crush type, it doesn't impede uh, medium tanks and other vehicles from crossing over the trench. One final thing I wanted to mention about these trenches are the tiling underneath. So I chose to go with the Urban Grime. And I'm definitely going to have more videos in, in more detail about tiling and you know some tips and tricks about tiling uh, in the future. But you can find the Urban Grime under Tiles Urban. And then you just, you know, or an alternative, actually, if you want this texture, you can just search Grime and it'll bring you a few options that are kind of related. I'm definitely going to add some more sandy splines or sandy splats and, and other kind of debris in here to make it a bit less uniform. But these defenses were were constructed well before the war, so the the concrete, you know, it's definitely this is not a, a one day job. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way these trenches turned out and the way they look. They might end up being a pain, and I might have to change some part to them for gameplay reasons. But that's just the nature of world building for Company of Heroes. Thank you for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. As always, if you have world building questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Be sure to give this video a like. And subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this and other stuff I'm planning in the future.